What's up, Internet? Welcome. Today, we're working on Jixer again. It's Monday. It's what we do. Monday's working on Jixer day. We've got our new radial front brake master cylinder. It's awesome. It comes with a new reservoir and hose. It comes with a lever. I mean, it's red. It even comes with a, a, a brake light switch. And it's literally ready to just bolt onto the bike, hook up the banjo bolt lines, and we're just, yeah. We're gonna have front brakes soon because as you saw in the last video um i can i can honestly say riding with just a rear brake sucks ass i don't ever want to do that again um but you know we were we were safe i had a vehicle trail me and we just went around the neighborhood for the most part it was it was okay but i don't want to do it again so front brakes um if you don't know what the difference is between an axial master cylinder and a radial master cylinder. Stick around. I'm gonna go through that right now. All right, here is the new radial master cylinder. Here is the stock axial master cylinder. We've got them positioned in the same manner, if you will. Okay, we can see the levers are kind of lined up the same. Let me back this guy up so it's in frame. Um, the main difference is it's really quite simple. So your lever, is operating on an axis in this direction. Inside your master cylinder, your piston is moving on a perpendicular axis in this direction, right? So you've got the lever moving up and down this way. It's pushing the piston in, in this direction, right? So you've got two perpendicular axes. I think I said all those words correctly. With the radial, the the uh, brake lever is operating on the same axis as the axial. The difference is, instead of your master cylinder running this way, it runs this way. So essentially, your master cylinder, the piston, all run on the same axis as your lever. And what does all this fancy stuff mean? It really just means that you can get more brake pressure, more brake pressure, more brake pressure, because the lever and the piston are moving along the same axis they share the same axis and so you're just getting more pressure without um, you're getting more brake pressure without having to add more lever pressure with your fingers if that makes sense it's something like that it's all on the googles you can you can look it up the googles never lies i'll throw a graphic up on the screen that will explain everything i just kind of murdered and butchered on the tubes. All right, let's get this shit mounted. All right, we've got the new radial master brake cylinder installed on the bike. I didn't really film the installation. I didn't really, I didn't at all because it's pretty straightforward. It installs just like you would expect any brake cylinder to install um, and exactly like the old one came off the bike. So no real magic there. However, there definitely are some differences with the radial. Uh, let's we'll start with clearance. So because we've got the piston moving in this direction, the same axis as our brake lever, this is sticking out quite a bit farther than the stock one. And clearance with the handlebars isn't perfect. So we're hitting our instrument cluster right there. However, we've got pretty good turning radius not perfect we're getting close to the frame in the tank something that probably is only gonna be an issue in parking lots making u-turns things of that nature the other gotcha is the brake reservoir they do include with the Nissan master cylinder this nice aluminum bracket which you could mount right here this is a hole with threads that you could use. Um, it's the same diameter and pitch as your banjo bolt. So if you had an extra banjo bolt, you could mount this here. It didn't really, it didn't really work well. Um, I was kind of pinching the brake line. I didn't like it. So this is the stock position and it's not perfect. You can see the reservoir is not really quite level, but it's close. We're gonna roll with it for now. So, and it barely clears this um, fairing mount it'll work though it'll work it'll work it will work the other gotcha is with the radials your banjo bolt brake line hookup 
underneath instead of out here. So the thing that you need to look out for is the bend on the end of your brake line. You can get them with different bends. Main thing you wanna look for is that you're not stressing the brake line, putting it into position to mount underneath the radial. With the Core Moto, this end kind of turns around like this, so that, that actually made it not so bad. Um, if the brake line is fighting you and you force the bolt in, you risk that coming loose because there's gonna be this constant pressure from the brake line fighting the position that you tried to put it into. Uh, the other thing is just getting a ratchet and a socket here was, was pretty difficult. There's really not a lot of clearance, so I ended up using a wrench. Um, I think that about covers it. Everything else pretty straightforward. Next step is to put brake fluid in it, start bleeding the system, get some brake pressure, what, working front brakes, working rear brakes. I love it. If you happen to watch, I think it was two videos ago, we installed the right side rear set and we primed and bled the rear brake and got the rear brake working. We're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna attach a hose to the bleeder valve and I'm just gonna pull the fluid from the reservoir down through the master cylinder brake line into the caliper and then I'm gonna switch sides and do it to the same caliper or do it to the other caliper on the other side, same thing. Woo, we got working front brakes. Lever feels pretty good actually, so. Um, one thing that one mistake that I made I'll share with you guys if you are doing a axial to radial master cylinder upgrade and that is a lot of these new radial yeah radial master cylinders have a bleeder valve on the master cylinder um, my suggestion would be that once you have primed the system you've sucked fluid and you got fluid all the way down to the calipers coming out of the bleeders I would go back up to the master cylinder and I would start that final bleeding at the master cylinder um, and the reason why I say that is I did not do that and I bled the calipers to the point where it seemed like I wasn't getting any air bubbles out of them I thought man I should have at least a, some brake pressure and then I remembered hey there's a bleeder on the master cylinder let me try that and um, I bled it once and immediately thereafter I had brake pressure and so I continued to bleed that um, and then I went back to the calipers and continued to bleed those and uh, here we are, really good feeling brake lever. I will probably bleed them again once I've ridden the bike a little bit just to make sure I can get them as perfect as possible. I'm also gonna try and relocate this master cylinder, um, not the master cylinder, the reservoir, because it's really, really bugging me. I don't like the way it's mounted right now. So it's, it's kind of fighting the mount a little bit. And um, anyway, it, it, it can be done better. So I'm gonna do it better. Um, man, so in the next video, I'm gonna pull the carbs back off the bike again, and we're gonna rejet it. Uh, the last time the jets and the carburetors were changed, I was at sea level. I lived in Virginia for um, a few years, and we had a dynode, M4 exhaust, Canon air filter, rejetted it. And so it's running just way too rich. We're about like 7,000 feet, almost 7,000 feet here in Colorado Springs, like 6,600 or something like that. So uh, it's running, it's just running way too rich. Uh, so we'll do that get it jetted right. I'll show you guys how to do that. A lot of times the service manuals will have this um, altitude and temperature chart matrix. And it, that's really good for giving you a baseline to start with as far as like main jets and needle settings and pilot jets. Uh, so we'll, we'll take a look at that um, and we'll use that to, to start with and we'll get it rejetted so it's running a lot better than it is right now. And, and then after that, it's gonna be like a real proper first ride with like front brakes and fairings and a legal license plate and insurance and tires that aren't 15 years old. And yeah, it'll be like a real proper first ride. It'll be sweet. I can't wait for that. Um, two videos, I think. Yeah. Well, something like that. It'll be two videos. Uh, all right, guys, I'm done. I'm out. Peace. Thumbs up. If you like the video, thumbs down. If you don't, um, Oh, if anybody's got any suggestions for tires, I'm not going to get another set of Dunlop Q3 Pluses. I'm on my second set of my Ninja. I want to try something different.
Pirelli's Michelin Metz or whatever. I'm open. I'm looking for something that's um, somewhere between like a track day tire and a touring tire, which is what I think the Q3 Pluses are really good at is uh, they're multi-compound, something that's got like a hard compound on top for highway mileage, but also has a softer compound on the edges for performance. That would be nice, a tire like that. Um, not a full-on track tire like the Q4s. I'm not really gonna, I'm not gonna track this bike. I'm not gonna race this bike or anything like that. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for. If anybody's got any experience, tire suggestions, leave me a comment down below, man. I appreciate it. And that's it, man. Check out monkeybuttrides.com. Got merch up there, Patreon dot com slash monkey butt if you want to support the channel that's out there and uh that's it man see you guys later bye